Hello and welcome to the 8th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering adding a door and a script to flash up some UI when we cross our cursor over it. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find the assets and the scripts to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. And you can also now join as a free member. And now, on with the tutorial. So, like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a door. And when we flash over the door with our UI, we want it to pop up and say, Open Door. And that's actually really, really simple to do. There's two scripts we're going to have to create in this tutorial. One is going to control the UI elements, and the other is going to be the script that allows the UI elements to appear. So firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wall, and I'm going to duplicate it, uh, move it over here, and I'm just going to expand it a little bit, just so as we start having corridors uh, you know, appearing in this level. Uh, so I'm going to set the scale to 20. And let's rotate it by 90, uh, just so we've got a nice flush wall and a corridor going down here. So it's here where we're going to have the door. Uh, let's take the floor and let's just move it here. And finally, let's just put another wall right along this edge. So duplicate this, move it along to round about there. And as always, I've done this super quick. You should take a little bit more time and make sure you do it just right. So we're going to have some objects here which represent a door. To do that, we're going to need to bring in some assets or specifically some textures. So let's go to our textures folder and we're going to bring in two assets, a left door and a right door. And if you go to the pinned comment or the link in the description, you can indeed download these assets for free. So I'm going to add in this left door. If you want to use the right one as well, that's entirely up to you. To do that, I'm going to go to Game Object, and then I'm going to go to 3D Object Cube. I'm going to bring this into the view, and then drag and drop my left door onto the cube. Now we need to resize the cube to make it look a little bit more like a door and not a square. So scale will have X as, let's have, in fact, it doesn't really matter, does it? We can have that as one because that is that way. Let's have the Z as three and the Y as seven. And let's lift it up and bring it into place. Put it round about there, slide it into the wall a little bit more. So now it does indeed look like it is part of the level. Uh, I'm going to quickly add in a normal map for this. So like we've done previously, let's duplicate. And let's change the texture type to normal map. Uh, I'm going to click create from grayscale and click on apply. And then I'm going to take the door down onto the uh, material down here and just drag and drop the normal map right there. Again, take more time with this. You don't need to rush it like I've done. So like I said, the idea is when we when our cursor crosses over the door, we want something to flash up on screen. And if you remember, we've put these interact cross, action, and command objects in our game previously. So we're going to create a script now which allows us to control that. So let's go to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create. And I've got C sharp scripts, but if you're in Unity 6, it may say something different like mono behavior script. We'll call this UI controller. And let's go into Visual Studio. And in here, we're going to create uh, a good chunk of variables. So we need to create a variable which allows us to change our action text. We need one that changes our command text. We need to actually reference those objects. And we also need a bool to detect when and when we don't display our UI. So firstly, let's get rid of this annotation. And let's start by saying public. And then we're going to take the word static. Now, the reason we type the word static is so as other scripts can access this particular variable. So what we've got here is a static variable that can be controlled in this script and other scripts. And this is going to be our action text. So this is going to be a string because it is text. And we'll call it action text. 
Next, we're going to have the same sort of thing, but we're going to call it command text. So command text, I see it's still a static. Next, we're going to have another static variable, and this is going to be a bool. And a bool can be true or false. It can only have two possible values. So if something is true, we set it as true. Something is false, we set it as false. So public, static, bool, and we'll call it UI active. So basically, is our UI active true or false? The next three variables we are going to have as uh, open square bracket, and we'll have serialize field. And what that will do is it will allow us to actually see the variable in our inspector panel. Rather than have it public, it might be a bit easier to have it as uh, have it serialized like this. It's going to be a game object, and it's going to be the action box. So it is theoretically part of the action text, but we're going to be able to control it as a game object. Once again, we're going to have serialize field, and it's also going to be a game object, and it is going to be command box. And you can see it's already predicting what it's going to be, and that is correct. So let's tab that across. Final one, serialize field again, and this is going to be another game object. And the game object, I'm hoping you've guessed what it is by now, is our interaction cross UI. So remember, when something flashes up on our UI, our interactive button changes. So let's call this interact cross and semicolon. So we don't need void start so we can get rid of it. We just need the update method. Now in here, we need to first start by saying, is our UI supposed to be active? For example, if, we are, if our cursor is not looking at this door, then our UI is not active, which means that the next script we're going to write needs to be able to control that. So we can say, if, and in brackets, UI active equals true. And remember, it's a double equals because we're saying, is it true? Open curly bracket. Now, if it is true, i.e. it is supposed to be on, then our action box needs to be on. So action box dot set active, and rather than false, we need to say true. Next, we also need to set our command box on. So indeed, it has predicted exactly what we need. Next, we need the interact cross set active. And again, yep, exactly what we need. So the next two lines of code mean we need to be able to control the text. Now to do that, we're using Text Mesh Pro. And if you're using an older version of Unity, this may not work quite the same. Uh, what I would recommend is if you have a look at my older survival horror game series, you'll see the line of code you need to use. But most people these days are using Unity, which uses Text Mesh Pro. So we're going to be using that, as we already have done when we put the UI elements in. So we now need to put action bots dot get component and in spiky brackets we need to put the text mesh pro component which is T M P R O and the T M P are all capitals dot T M P underscore text open close bracket dot text equals action text. So remember when I said that the static variables get controlled from other scripts, but can also be controlled in this script. What it means is the next script we're going to write, we're going to directly change what action text will say. And that means that we can indeed display it here. So we also need to do the same for command. So we're going to say command box dot get component, and in spiky brackets, same again, tmpro, text match pro, dot tmp underscore text, open close bracket, dot text equals, and we're going to do something different here. I've put some quotes ready, because we need to display the E key before we display whatever the command text says. And we're just going to have square brackets with the E key in, and then a space, and then 
another quote, and then plus command text semicolon. So let me quickly go over this line because it is a little bit different than our action text. What we're saying is the command box, the text in this, must display the letter E, and E the prompt to press the E key, and whatever we have displayed in the command text. So that's all we need to display if our UI needs to be on screen. However, if our UI is not on screen, we need to tell this script to turn it all off. So after the close curly bracket, we put the word else and then open curly bracket and hit return. And what this will do is basically say that if our UI is active, then do this. Otherwise, do this. And you can see already it's predicting exactly what we need here. So action box .seth active is false. Return. And again, it's predicted the right thing. And once again, it's predicted it. So I've just tabbed through that because the script uh, knows exactly what we're doing here. So we can now save that script. And if you do have any problems with any of these scripts, go to the pinned comment, go to the description. You'll see a link where you can get these assets and scripts for free. So now if we head back into Unity, after the script is compiled, there we go. Now, we need to put in a game object which will allow us to control things. And we've got a couple of different game objects here, but there's nothing serious in terms of what we're doing to be able to control things in the level. So let's go to game object, create empty. And we'll have an object called level control. So any scripts that control different things regarding our player or the level, we just can put in here. So we're just going to drag and drop this UI controller onto level control. And we just need to assign these variables right here. So action box is action, command over here, and then interact cross right there. So we've got our UI handler all set up. This is going to be perfect for us. What we need to do now is create another script which says when our cursor passes over this door, then we need to activate some things in that UI controller script. So what we're going to do is let's right click, create, and we'll create another script and call this um, metal door. And let's go into this script. And all we need to do in here is reference a couple of things inside that other script. We don't need any of these methods. We don't need start and we don't need update. What we do need is a method called on mouse over and on mouse exit. Because our mouse defines where our cursor is looking. So void on mouse over and then get rid of our private. We don't need it to be private, it's fine. And here what we're saying is we're saying we want the action text to say open door. We want the command text to say open. And then we need to set the UI as on. So we can say UI controller dot action text equals, and we'll say open door with the semicolon. Next, we'll say UI controller dot command text. And we'll have this just say open. And finally, we just need to say UI controller dot UI active equals true. Now, obviously, we've got to do the inverse of this. So whenever we take our cursor off of this door and look at the wall, for example, we need to do the exact opposite. And what we can do is we can copy that method, paste it below. And then we can change it to on mouse exit. And all we need to do is change the open door to nothing, open to nothing, and change the UI active to false and save. And as I said, if you have any problems with anything here, just head to those uh, links and you'll be able to download them for free and make sure you have it all working. So we let this compile and then we'll head back into Unity. Now we need to attach this metal door script to our metal door. And what I'm going to do is rename this as left metal door. If I can spell door correctly. And I'm going to bring the level control object right to the top of our scene, just so as we've got easy access to it. Next, drag and drop the metal door script onto left metal door. 
And because we didn't set any variables, there's nothing to define here. You can just see it's just a nice little script sitting on this particular object. So let's press play. And hopefully we should be able to walk over to our door now and we should be able to cross our cursor over it. No problem at all. So let's head over this way. And here's our door. And there we go. So you can see as we cross over, yep, we can indeed open the door. Now, one thing that we should possibly take a look at is um, the camera because it kind of zooms in as we look down. Uh, I know we did it a long time ago, but we kind of rushed into it. And what we need to do is change a couple of things in our player to make it a little bit better. So what we'll do is we'll adjust the camera. Uh, so if we go to player camera route and change the main camera to 000, there we go. It looks a little bit funky like that. Uh, we need to adjust the position of the camera root um, probably up a little bit. So if I put it as maybe 2.5, see how that looks and see if it uh, looks a little better. We might turn off the pink capsule as well. We don't really need the capsule to be visible. Yeah, there we go. So now we can actually look around without it kind of zooming in and out as we look around. Uh, but what we will do is on player capsule, let's turn off. Uh, go on the right one. Turn off the mesh renderer. There we are. So rather than the player capsule, it's the actual capsule. And we just need to turn it off. So let's press play. And once again, we're going to have a look at our door, but I'm going to point something out to you, which is kind of a prelude into our next tutorial. So there's our door, but look, we could open it all the way from over here. And that brings me nicely to the end of this tutorial to tell you what we're going to do in the next one. So next time we're going to work with something called Raycast. I'll explain it much more in the next tutorial, but in a nutshell, it can determine the distance between us and an object. And that means that we wouldn't be able to open this door unless we were actually right next to that door. So until that next tutorial, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up with every upload on this channel. I will see you next time.